In this video, we'll talk about how you can change the basal rate of your insulin pump. We'll discuss what is basal rate, in what situation you should consider changing basal rate, and how to do it. Basal rate is the amount of insulin the pump releases into your body every one hour. For example, a basal rate of 2 units per hour means the pump gives you 2 units of insulin every hour. Why do we need basal insulin? Or why do we need a constant trickle of insulin throughout the day? When you have diabetes, liver and muscles store a lot of sugar and they constantly release sugar into the blood. As a result, you need a trickle of insulin entering your blood all the time, 24 hours a day, to prevent blood sugar from going up. Basal insulin is not meant to cover meals. If you have any of the problems here, you should test your basal rate to see if it needs to be changed. Do you wake up with high blood sugar? Do you wake up with low blood sugar? Do you have to force yourself to eat at certain times of the day to prevent low blood sugar? Do you have high blood sugar even when you are fasting? If you are experiencing any of these issues, you might need to change basal rate. Then how to find out if your basal rate is correct? You will need to select 12 hours in a day and fast over the whole 12 hours. This is typically easier to do at night as you won't eat in sleep anyway. Check your blood sugar at 4 hour and check it again at 12 hour. Compare those two numbers. If your blood sugar goes up from 4 hour to 12 hour, you need to increase basal rates by about 10%. If your blood sugar goes down from 4 hour to 12 hour, you need to decrease basal rates by about 10%. The reason for fasting 4 hours before the first blood sugar check is to make sure that food will not affect your blood sugar for the 8 hours between the two blood sugar checks. Now let's look at a few examples to better understand this. This gentleman wanted to test his basal rate overnight from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So he started fasting at 7 p.m., check blood sugar at 11 p.m., go to sleep, then check blood sugar again at 7 a.m. the next morning, and then have breakfast. He did this on three different days. On day one, blood sugar went up from 123 to 178. On day two, blood sugar went up from 151 to 220. On day 3, blood sugar went up again from 134 to 196. Blood sugar went up from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. over all three nights. So he needs to get more insulin overnight. He increased the basal rate by about 10% from 1 unit per hour to 1.1 units per hour for the night time. In this second example, this person also wanted to test his basal rate overnight from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So he started fasting at 7 p.m., check blood sugar at 11 p.m., go to sleep, then check again at 7 a.m., and have breakfast. He also tested on three different days. You can see his blood sugar went down over all three nights. I will pause a second so you can verify that yourself. He needs to get less insulin overnight, so he reduced basal rates by about 10% from 1 unit per hour to 0.9 units per hour for the night time. You might notice that despite the blood sugar went down overnight, his blood sugar is still high in the morning. And you might ask, why reducing basal rate, despite his blood sugar has been high the whole time? Let's say if we do not reduce basal rate, and at one night when he goes to sleep, 
blood sugar for some reason is only 100. Maybe he just exercised in the evening. Maybe he ate less for dinner. Since his blood sugar will go down overnight with the current basal rate, it's very likely he will wake up with low blood sugar, and that is dangerous. In fact, the real problem here is a high blood sugar at bedtime. Because if his blood sugar is not high at bedtime to begin with, it will not be high the next morning, even after we reduce the basal rate. So we need to find out the reason for high blood sugar before sleep. Is that because he did not get enough bolus of insulin for dinner? Or is it because he snacks in the evening without taking insulin? This whole thing will be even more intuitive if you use a continuous glucose monitor. Look at the part of the blood sugar line starting from 4 hours after your last meal till 12 hours after your last meal. If the line goes up, you will need to increase basal rate. If it comes down, you will need to decrease basal rate. We want to keep the line mostly flat. In this next example, he wanted to test the basal rate in the afternoon and evening time from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. So he started fasting at 8 a.m., check blood sugar at 12 p.m., and check again at 8, 8, 8 p.m. He did it on three different days. His blood sugar went up from 156 to 211 on the first day went down from 231 to 187 the second day, and stay about the same from 167 to 172 on the third day. You are not able to see a consistent trend here. Some days it went up, some days it went down. As a result, he cannot change basal rate. Blood sugar is influenced by many things like stress, infection, pain, medication change, and so on. So you may not see the same trends every time. A few important points. First, you would like to test it on a few days, see a consistent trend before making a change in basal rates, because blood sugar can fluctuate from day to day. Second, do not give any bolus of insulin over the whole 12 hours of fasting. Otherwise, you will not be able to tell whether the change in blood sugar is due to the bolus of insulin or due to basal rate. Third, do not exercise over the whole 12 hours of fasting. Again, the reason is, if you exercise, you will not be able to tell whether the change in blood sugar is due to exercise or due to basal rate. If you are also interested in learning how to change carb ratio, or sensitivity factor in the pump, you can go to hmfdiabetes.com, search how to change carb ratio or how to change sensitivity factor in insulin pump, and it will give you answers made by endocrinologists. Or you can just search for anything else related to diabetes.